Hello, I'm Father George Salzman of the Harvard Catholic Center. We're here right at uh, Harvard Law School. I'd like to ask for your prayers with a student who died, a law student who died over the uh, over the holidays. Uh, prayers for him and his parents and family, and uh, for friends and students here. And uh, his parents put out a really touching memoir about him and his life, and they included it in a remarkable line. And the line was used about Dorothy Day, the founder of the Catholic Workers Movement, concerned for the homeless and all, which also was apt for his life. But the line was, the line was, that she lived as if the truth were true. And Tommy's parents said that really summed up his life, which is, if you think of it, as a magnificent eulogy for the ages. He lived as if the truth were true. Right across the street here is Cambridge Common, where George Washington took command of the Continental Army for things he thought, reasons that he thought were solid and true at the risk of his own life and fortune. And over on the other side of Harvard Yard is the where John Adams got past the, uh, the Massachusetts Constitution after the Revolution, and that's the oldest constitution in the world still ticking, still going strong. And so the people who founded our country, our government, they uh, really thought the truth was true. They thought it mattered and they valued it and they lived their lives by it. And I think it's fair to say, so should we. So should we. As a kid, I was accused, like all of you, I'm sure, of possessing endless energy, and any jury seeing our addicts would, uh, would, would convict. And my mother, of course, like all parents, had a cunning plan. And hers was, long before preschool, to make sure I read, read, to teach me to read. And that kept me occupied for, for a good while. And then her plan, too, when that seemed to fail, was uh, to teach me to write. She set me up at my father's desk during the day, and there'd be index cards and books and quotations, and to take some of them down that I liked and I enjoyed. And that worked for a bit, too. But uh, it did hit a smag, snag, and that was a number of the, con the, the quotations were in Latin, and it was a puzzle to figure those out. And so, uh, and so that was a bit of a snag. Well, we've, in a sense, in our country, hit Latin. Not really Latin, but the obscure or the obscurantism, you could say, of people playing games, playing pretend while avoiding reality, and if you wait for it, the truth, the truth of things. We should, I think, choose instead to live and govern ourselves responsibly, we the people, after all, as if the truth were true, and as if we were ever on the truth's side. And in that sense, then, truth could be our interpreter of everything. Even with my parents' quick translation of the Latin, of the Latin maxims that I found, uh, there were some things that still I couldn't figure out where they would touch down in reality. I guess I didn't have enough life experience. And uh, one that seemed a bit rarefied or true was the, uh, the motto of Ben Franklin's University of Pennsylvania. It was, Leges sine moribus bane. Laws without morals are vain. Laws without the people being upright are completely in vain. And I didn't understand that then. But now, I really see the point. If people have no taste for the good, if they have no ear for the truth, if they have no nose to smell out fraud or cons or lies, if they neither hunger nor thirst for justice, if they've long decided that uh, truth need not be true, but just vacuously term it truth, even when it isn't, then no contract or charter or indeed constitution will possess even the weight of their ashes. By such unconcern, whether blithe or militant, all the wisdom of the ages, or of experience, or of the very slow march of the human mind, or heart, or soul, uh, will be emptied, destroyed, and just turned into dust. To live as if the truth were true. May Tommy's favorite phrase capture our minds and hearts. All the more so at a school where veritas, truth, is actually on the shield. And may that servant of God, the founder of the Catholic worker, with those homes for places to take in the homeless that no one else would find a place for, may she teach us fully to see the truth of things so that we no longer overlook the poor, nor overlook those who are having trouble making their rent or their mortgage or indeed their payrolls. And may the Pope's new letter on friendship which in many ways tries to teach us things that COVID is also teaching us by experience. Our need for other people and our need to be shoulder to shoulder in solidarity with everyone around the world. May God bless you.